My name is Liad Ofek, Director of Product Management for our Virtualization Solution, part of the Enterprise Networking Team. So in this section, I want to talk about the announcement we have made yesterday at Cisco Live called Secure Agile Exchange. That's another part of our DNA virtualization offer, and it's focusing on co-location uh, facilities. So let's go through and understand what does it mean, actually mean. So if you look on traditionally, where our customers, our enterprise customers, hosted their, most of their application on their private data center, all the different consumers can be their own employees from the branches, maybe using mobile devices, can be partners connecting to their extranet, or their customers. Traditionally, they were all connected to their data center. And my organization create a DMZ area to protect those, those accessing from the internet, really having a lot of security services, load balancer, maybe one optimization in that DMZ area. But what has happened in the last few years, and you're all familiar with that, with the evolution of cloud, a lot of these applications have moved or are in the process of moving from that data center into the cloud in a form of a software as a service or running on an infrastructure as a service. So what organizations have done, the first thing they said, okay, let me still traditionally get all these consumers from my data center and from there get them into the cloud because they wanted to maintain the same security posture, the same policies that they had previously. However, this model creates some new challenges. One is performance, right? Why do you need to backhaul everything to the data center from go to a cloud service? Why not going direct, right? Now with new cloud services being added all the time, the DMZ, which traditionally is a static, physical based DMZ, it's very, very difficult to make changes. And cloud is so easy to just spin up new cloud services. The DMZ and the infrastructure in the data center was not agile enough to make that changes. So a lot of organizations said, hey, why won't I connect directly to the cloud, enabling direct internet access? So with our, this is where SD-WAN and our IWAN services and security services to the branch using our enterprise NFV solution can help, right? Put some services at the branch, enable direct internet access. However, a lot of these DMZ services are required as well in that model. So, what has also happened in the last couple of years, the evolution of co-location centers or carrier neutral facilities. These are facilities that physically actually exists very close to all these cloud providers. So this actually creates an opportunity to move all these DMZ services into that co-location facility, right? And offer the same services. And what that can enable a lot of customers to just connect all the data consumer through that co-location facility, and from there, go directly to the cloud or go back to your private data center. So our announcement with Secure Agile Exchange is about that, is about virtualizing your DMZ, extend it to the co-location, and giving you the ability to connect your customers, employee, and partners to any service in the cloud through these co-location facilities. So are you hosting the co-location facilities? Great questions, and that's leading us to the next section. So we actually are look on who are the leading co-location facilities. Equinix is one of the leaders. So I want to invite Klaus to talk about it from Equinix, to talk about exactly that co-location facility and how you're going to work with them on that. So uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Klaus Mertens. I work as a global solution architect with Equinix. Um, before that, I worked for quite some time with global network carriers, um, designing global wide area networks, basically. And the question here is, why is uh, a secure agile exchange so important in a co-location facility, or why a co-location facility is interesting for an enterprise customer nowadays? I need to get back a little bit into history of why new deal co-location facilities came about anyhow. And this is because, just if you look, as the internet is built and as the cloud is built, it sounds nice like being a cloud, being somewhere around in the ether or wherever, but actually it's still a physical location. So wherever you build your services, wherever you build your applications, it still needs to be somewhere on a physical hardware. Whenever you build a network, it still needs to be physical cables who will be connected together. Um, I mean, you have all the subsea cables, you have all the various fiber cables running around the world, and they need to come together at one central point where they connect 
to each other, basically. And that's a carrier neutral facility. So with the advent of the internet and when we started to evolve, and Equinix is one big example for that, then the internet exchanges started to pop up. And you're probably be all familiar with what, what an internet exchange is, where internet service providers come together and exchange traffic on an equal term, basically. And moving into cloud facilities now means that all these cloud providers where these applications are moving, they still need to get their traffic and their services back to their customers, to the users which are using these applications, basically. And so they still need to have access to all the network providers. What that means to them is even if they build their cloud facilities somewhere where they have easy cooling, easy access to power, where they have large spaces or whatever, they still need to get their services back to the network providers. And the network providers historically are where all the other network providers are, in the carrier neutral facility. So that means also the cloud providers, they'll be moving with their access devices, with their network into this facility as well. And if you now start as an enterprise to make use of these cloud applications basically, then you will need the access as well. So what Liat just said, when you start moving your applications from your private data center up into the cloud and you start connecting that, then you will anyhow do this via such a facility. So basically, if you then start to also move your DMZ and network function virtualization up here into this uh, carrier neutral facility and into a secure agile exchange, then you can all of a sudden access all these various services from this facility. So you're actually moving your connectivity into a facility where all the services are actually already available. When you look at your private data center, which you usually have and which you access via any kind of network, then you are limited in a certain way. It might be that your private data center is somewhere very uh, outside in the countryside or wherever you are located and network connectivity is scarce. It's difficult to connect. You need to dig fiber or whatever. Um, so it's difficult to even extend the connectivity. It's difficult to link in all these various services which you're, which you're, which you're using all of a sudden. But by moving your central network point and your central application delivery point into a carrier neutral facility, you get the opportunity to get access to all of these services with basically unlimited bandwidth and with a very low latency. Because all the services you're using and all the various parties you want to connect to, they are already in this facility. You can connect to the clouds, you can connect to the networks, you can even connect to partners, customers directly in this facility because they might also be there to, uh, to benefit from the connectivity options you have there. And with a secure agile exchange, so with a virtualized network function, you also make it happen that you can actually implement these connections within minutes, with an ubiquitous amount of bandwidth because the physical connectivity is already there. Within a data center, within a carrier neutral facility, any partner you want to connect to is just a short fiber cable away. So it's just a standard Ethernet, thousand base, Alex connection. It's just a 10G based connectivity or 40G, 100G, whatever ports are available uh, on the partner in your hardware. You can just connect to them physically without the need to dig fiber to somewhere where your local data center is. And in addition, you can also use these interconnection points with a secure agile exchange in, in a kind of pay as you use model. So you can use the connectivity activated at one day to one partner. The other day you might use a connectivity to another partner, to another cloud. You deactivate the old connectivity and activate a new one. So it's also that you're very flexible with your connectivity. And the third, uh, which is also very important, is obviously the security. Because the connectivity in this carrier neutral facility, it benefits both from the physical security you get in a high class data center. So if you look at such a carrier neutral facility, it's usually three, tier three plus or something. So it's really a decent data center with this necessary physical security. But also it gives you the option to connect to these cloud services in an auditable and controlled way. It's not just over the internet where you're not really sure of how the connectivity will go. It will probably work quite as good as it used to, but you can't really control it. You won't get an SLA on the internet usually, or only in very certain circumstances. So with this, you get a secure and available connectivity to all the various services you have there. 
and with the secure agile exchange from Cisco, you can have that facility integrated into the network management you already have and you're already used to in the standard uh, connectivity model and make use of all the connectivity options. So even in a data center, in a carrier neutral data center, where it usually uh, was kind of physical cables run through the data center, so you need to call somebody, they need to go and plug the cable to the left, plug it to the right, connect them both together. It usually took about whatever, two days, three days a week, depending on whatever facility you have. Now even this connectivity is virtualized. So even providers like ours, like Equinix, we are building virtual exchanges where you can connect to once with a high bandwidth capacity cable and then have a virtual cross connect within the data center to other parties, which is completely software enabled, which is completely SDN based, which you can link into such a platform like the Secure Agile Exchange and have an actual interconnection point within this data center, which is completely virtualized in terms of bandwidth and in terms of connectivity um, partner you want to connect to. So it can be one of the big cloud providers, it can be other service providers, it can be DDoS protection services, it can be security services, it can be unified communication services, whatever kind of service you want to access in this data center, you can connect via this agile exchange, via the same platform on a virtualized level. And that's only possible if you come to a location where actually these parties are already there in the same physical location. So what I usually do is I compare these locations with kind of airports. Just if you, if you come to Frankfurt, if you want to fly out of Germany, you most possibly will fly over Frankfurt or Munich, which are the biggest airports. And if you come from Bremen or from Hanover or from somewhere, you will come to Frankfurt and then fly out to the various locations. But at the same time, you have all the facilities on these airports where you can have a rest in a hotel, have a restaurant, where you can meet, where you can have dinner, you can meet with your clients. If you have cargo, you can have it processed over there. And basically, a carrier neutral facility is just like kind of a major hub airport, but just for data. All the various airlines, so carriers, they are there. The major processing facilities, logistics companies are there at this location, and you can easily exchange the cargo or the passengers, so your data and your applications at this facility. Luckily, the D6 is also in Frankfurt. Yeah? Again? Luckily, the D6 is also in Frankfurt. Exactly, exactly. So that's where all, and that's one of the reasons why it came together. And for example, if you're mentioning D6 as the kind of the major internet exchange in, in Germany or in Europe, and even the largest by traffic in the world, and for example, we as Equinix, we also operate internet exchanges in the US and in APAC, which do necessarily the same, um, but also for the internet. So it's, a, it's an internet exchange. But with the secure agile exchange, you can have private and secured connectivity on this facility. So what exactly do you provide within this secure agile exchange? But, but shall I? Yeah, but, um, I mean, what we do is basically we provide the location where it happens, where you actually put this secure agile exchange infrastructure from Cisco and where you can have the physical access. So we as the partner, we just provide the airport. So like the, the physical so facilities. The yes, okay. exactly. Thank you, Klaus. So let's go a bit deeper and understand actually, now we understand the, you know, what it is, where is it. We talked about the benefits, right? You, you, you have a location, we can extend the security policy that you used to have in your DMZ and now connect all your data uh, uh, consumers to where the, the, the data is, resides through that location, have the performance agility of extending because it's all virtualized now. You can add more services when you need them, but also save cost, circuit cost, because connecting to a co facility is much cheaper than connecting everything to the data center and also get performance. So what are the components of the Secure Edge Exchange to your question? So we're talking about an NFV platform, this is our CSP2100, the Cloud Services Platform 2100, a switching fabric to connect them together, VNF environment, Cisco or third party, but also some uh, services that enable our organization to create, design it, and implement it or manage it through our cloud managed services. So let's look on this network diagram. This is what we have there. So on the left side, this is where you're going to connect all your data consumers, right? 
your employees, your workers, your partners into this secure edge exchange. Everything here in the middle, that's the secure edge exchange solution. So I would have some high-end routers with high-speed connectivity to terminate the connections. I may have some firewall around just to protect everything inside because it's all open in the internet and in the cloud. And then I have the secure edge exchange fabric, which are several switches and CSP platforms to host virtual network services, such as firewall, load balancers, one optimization, vulture routers to terminate VPNs, uh, monitoring, all that you, you can actually create multiple chains based on different combinations. So you can have one chain for my partner A accessing Office 365 applications. I want to have these services in that chain. Partner B, maybe I want to add some one optimization because they paid for that or they're more important into that chain. So you're going to have different VNF chains. With an orchestration layer and a dashboard on top, which is a service catalog, as an organization you can automate and deploy the right service, services you need in a chain for the right combination of consumer and where the data resides. Is it a customer accessing my Amazon, a partner accessing my data center, an employee accessing Office 365? For each one of these combinations, different set of services, all virtualized as VNF on this platform. And if I go deeper a little bit on this, this fabric, this is how we're designing that. So set of CSPs connected to Nexus switches in a, a spine and lift design so you can extend it and, uh, as much as you need. You can start with just one CSP if you only want to try out maybe a couple of VNF. Once you add more CSPs, you start creating your switching fabric and really expand your virtualization platform. So when you say you can add more CSPs, are those CSPs yours or mine? Right, so great question about what is the consumption model of that. So today, um, you would buy as a customer, you would come to Equinix and say, okay, I want to buy the location. You do that separately. Then you come to Cisco and say, I want a secure edge of exchange. You can get uh, our advanced services to help you with design, they can implement it, but you would purchase this equipment and you're going to own it as uh, an end user. We are also working with some service providers. So you're selling me a blueprint and the boxes and I have to build and operate. We also sell you some services that can do it or manage it for you. If you don't want to own it, we are working with some service providers that can offer it as a managed service. That is still in early phases, but that's an opportunity for some service providers to own that part and offer it to you as a complete uh, service uh, for you, so you don't actually own the equipment. Okay, so this is our Secure Agile Exchange and the, the design below it. So effectively, you are teaching me how to build my DMZ. Yes. In a virtualized manner, which hasn't been the case so far, at a co-location facility. We have some customers actually starting to deploy that on their own prem. You can start on your own prem. You don't have it to go immediately to the co-location. So the first step can be just virtualizing your DMZ and automating it. Second phase can be move to a co-location facility and do it there. And you can buy it as a whole package yes. so that I say 